This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Right, you're happy with all those ratios? Have you had a look through them? Uh, you may even have attempted the, the examples already. I don't think there are anything that is too challenging within them. So it, it's nice to know that there's some easy computation aspects within the exam. Uh, so first example that we're going to look at is focusing on the liquidity ratios, which means looking at your current ratio and quick ratio. Uh, current ratio, yep, current assets over current liabilities. Quick ratio, current assets, less inventory, isn't it? So removing the inventory uh, to work out your, your quick ratio, giving you a more accurate reflection, if you like, of your liquidity. Uh, so what you've got, you've just got some extracts from Ariel's statement of financial position. Uh, you've got your assets at the top, your liabilities are at the bottom. So your total current assets, if you add them up, 50, 70 and 10 uh, is that 130,000. Uh, 88 and 7 is that 95,000. So when you're going through that and working out your current ratio, it's the 130,000 divided by 95,000 is that at 1.37 to 1. Okay. There we go. It, it, what does it say? It says that we have more current assets than current liabilities. That's it. You know, we don't know whether it's gone up. We don't know whether it's gone down. Uh, we don't even know what the industry is. You know, if it was a heavy manufacturing industry, you might regard that as being a bit low. Uh, if you're looking at a supermarket, which tends to be less than one, you, you could regard that as being quite high. OK, so you know, we're just doing the calculations in terms of your quick ratio. That takes the current assets of 130 and deducts the inventory. Is it there of 50? And again, divides it by, is it the 95,000? Again, double check on your calculator. Gives me that 0.84 to 1. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that there is ever so slightly more liabilities than what you have with regards to, to more liquid assets. Uh, but hopefully that inventory will be quite fast moving. You'll be able to sell it reasonably quickly uh, to compensate for that. OK, but if, if the payables and the interest was due on demand, you, you may struggle to go through and pay things back. But at the end of the day, uh, this is a ratio. We do have cash at bank. So, you know, that, that's a good starting point, isn't it? It's not as if we're overdrawn. If we were overdrawn, I would be a little bit more concerned. OK. Excellent. So that's the first one, looking at your liquidity ratios. Uh, if we go on and then have a look at the second example, which is there all to do with your efficiency ratios, that's looking at inventory days, receivable days and payable days, isn't it? So it wants us to go through that. Uh, we're looking at extract from the TB. It's for the financial year. So it's not six months. It's not three months quarterly. It's a full year. So I want to take my statement of financial position figure at the year end, divide it by a statement of profit or loss and multiply by 365 days. OK. Excellent. Uh, again, you can see there that, that you have. These SFP figures, is it the inventory receivables and payables? Uh, you've got the profit or loss figures above, but do just be careful. Because we want to look at credit sales, don't we, with regards to receivables. And we want to look at credit purchases with regards to your payables. OK, so what we can do, uh, I'll use a separate page of paper here. Uh, if we're looking at my inventory days, it takes my year end inventory of 220 and divides it by the 1800. So is that 220 divided by the 1800 multiplied by 365 gives me 44.6 days. So to you and I, 45 days. Again, the question will be specific with regards to rounding. Usually it would be to the nearest day, but I'll leave it there, 44.6. Don't put in number of hours. Don't be so ridiculous. Uh, you then have... 
is it your receivable days? So that takes your receivables divided by your credit sales. So receivables are 350. The credit sales are 85%, aren't they, of the 2600? So if I take, is it the 350 divided by 85% of 2600? And multiply by 365. Does that give me 57.8 days? Okay. Excellent. Uh, last but by no means least is going through there, isn't it? And looking at your payable days. Uh, your payable days take your payables, which we have there at 260. But remember, it's dividing it, isn't it, by your credit purchases, of which our total purchases were 1650, our credit are 90% of them. So 260 divided by 90% of 1650. Multiplied by 365 gives me 63.9 days. Okay. Excellent. Uh, if you so wished, if you wanted to work out your working capital cycle, okay, so how long does it go through there and take to get the cash in? Uh, or if you like, how long are you without cash within a business? And we'll, we'll touch upon this in a moment shortly. If I can find my calculator back there on the floor. 44.6 plus 57.8, uh, 63.9 gives me 38.5 days. Okay, uh, we'll explain that in a little bit more detail afterwards. Okay, but that's your your working capital cycle or your cash operating cycle. Yeah, the number of days that the business is without cash. But I will elaborate on that afterwards. Okay. Uh, what you may have to do, instead of working out the number of days and the, and the working capital cycle, uh, you may actually have to go through there and look at the physical amount of working capital that you require within the business. Okay. Oh, just a little bit too far. There we go. Perfect. Uh, so the question, instead of asking you to work out the number of days, is asking you to work out the investment in the working capital. So how much in raw dollar terms should you have of working capital in regards to inventory, receivables and payables? OK, because what you're given is you're given the operating cycle figures there in terms of the number of days. And we know, don't we, that the number of days that you calculate. So what's being given there? is the statement of financial position figure divided by profit or loss multiplied by 365, isn't it? Okay. Here, what we're looking at is to find out the amount of working capital invested in the statement of financial position. So what we're going to go through and do is we're going to take the number of days. We're going to multiply that by the profit or loss figure. And then we are going to divide by 365 to rearrange that equation, aren't we? OK, that's what we need to play with. Again, we've got the number of days here, haven't we, in terms of inventory, receivables and payables at the bottom. We've got the revenue, which we will use. We're given gross profit. We could work out your cost of sales, couldn't we? Quite simply by being the difference. 250 less 90. Uh, is that oh, my mind's gone blank 160 okay as uh, so cost of sales of there is it as 160,000 okay uh, excellent so uh, let's go through uh, have a play around with the numbers uh, and see how we get on so there's our last question let's just go through there and work out is it, it we'll, we'll go through there and look at inventory our investment in inventory. Uh, inventory, we stock for 68 days. So it's 68 divided by 
0.365 and we multiply by our cost of sales figure don't we which is there is it as 160 so multiply by 160,000 so 68 divided by 365 times 160,000 gives me there is it an investment of 29,800 and eight I require in my inventory. Okay, that's the amount of inventory that we have that will replenish every 68 days. If I then go through and look at is it my receivables? Uh, the receivables, is it there as 88 days? So 88 divided by 365 multiply by my sales technically it should be credit sales but there's no distinction between cash and credit here uh, so my investment in receivables is 60274 so every 88 days I would expect to receive $60,274 uh, my payables that we have uh, payable days that you've got are 114. Wow. So 114 uh, divided by the 365. Multiplied by, technically it should be credit purchases, but we haven't got a credit purchase figure. It's just there, uh, your cost of sales. Uh, so my investment there is 49,973. Okay. Uh, what you can do there to work out the total investment in working capital, you add your assets investment and deduct your liabilities. So 29808 plus 60274 less 49973 uh, goes through there and gives you a total net investment in working capital of 401. Zero nine. Okay. Uh, again, you, you could be asked a question that just asks you for an individual investment in working capital in terms of inventory receivables or payables. Well, there's nothing I suppose to stop the examiner asking you for, for all of it combined. Okay. There we go. Uh, just to go through, finish it off. We did say we would touch upon it afterwards and give you a little bit more detail it's talking about your, your cash operating cycle or your working capital cycle the definition there is the length of time between the company's outlay on raw materials and the inflow from the sale of goods so i.e the, the length of time that you are without cash okay so what you've got there is initially so today at zero uh, you make a credit purchase, okay, and then after so many days, uh, you go through there, don't you, and make that payment, okay. Uh, then what happens is you've got your inventory, you, you, you make the sale, don't we, on inventory after so many days. So let's just say that, that you made the cash payment on 40 days. Uh, the credit sale was there, was it, after 70 days? And then the receivable days was there, shall we say, after 105, okay, from today, okay. Uh, so, so what you've got there, essentially, is the period of time uh, that between the outlay on the raw materials and the cash receipt. This here, essentially, is your cash operating cycle, isn't it? Uh, so after 40 days we make a payment so therefore we are without cash and we don't get that cash in until day 105 so here that would be is it 65 days okay uh, the 105 less the 40 but you're not likely to have it like that within the exam what's going to happen with, within the exam if i move it down ever so slightly is that you would have your inventory days is it equal to 70? Your receivable days are equal to, is it 35, isn't it? The difference from 70 to 105. 
and then you have your payable days was there was it as 40 and if you total that up that should give you 65 so that's the number of days that you are without cash or from its technical definition the number of days from when you make the payment for your purchase of goods so the raw materials until when you receive the cash from the collection of this credit sale okay uh, which is what we did in, the, in that previous example wasn't it we worked out inventory days receivable days and payable days and then we worked out your cash operating cycle or if you like your working capital cycle okay uh, excellent again uh, 65 days that's about two and a bit months isn't it uh, it depends upon the inventory uh, heavy manufacturing businesses will have a very long working capital cycle uh, because they have a big investment in inventory and have lots of credit sales whereby a supermarket uh, very small inventory days very small receivable days and probably quite high payable days there's nothing to say there that for a supermarket that you could have a negative working capital cycle which doesn't mean to say that that's a bad thing from the supermarket's perspective it's possibly not fair on the suppliers but what it means there is that the supermarket is using the suppliers as a short form period of finance okay a nice cheap method of finance which is just a little bit unfair and brings about maybe some some ethical issues that, that are beyond the scope of the syllabus at this point in time okay but just be aware that a negative cash operating cycle isn't necessarily a bad thing but you need to be a large business to be able to have the power over your suppliers to implement that negative cash operating cycle okay so hopefully those questions there that, that were worked through the numbers weren't too much of a challenge uh, it, it's actually a really good area of the syllabus i think to get stuck into the numbers uh, the discussion aspect i feel will come more within the case study but for now don't worry about the case study practice the objective test questions in whatever revision kit that you have from your tuition providers and then uh, see how you get on. If you get stuck, then you know where we are.